Hello lovely people, welcome to another book chat, the regular roundup of stuff I've read at some point in my past. Um, I have three books to talk about this week, one fiction, two non-fiction. I'm just going to crack on with the fiction first. This is The Garden of Evening Mist by Tan Tuan Eng. Tan Tuan Eng is a Malaysian writer. This is set in Penang, and it follows Yunling, who... Um, we sort of have two timelines going on here. So we have Yunling as a much older woman who has returned to this place, The Garden of Evening Mist, where she spent um, a large portion of time when she was younger. It's this uh, Japanese-style garden that was built by uh, this Japanese man called Aratomo. Aratomo was an immensely famous uh, garden designer. He was the gardener for the Japanese emperor. He also was an artist who'd done lots of woodblocks. He's left all of this to her. So she's returned to this place after a very long time away because uh, this Japanese historian has requested um, to use these um, prints. While she is there, she starts writing about her life and so the other timeline is sort of giving the backstory of her relationship with Aratomo um, when she helped him build this garden. And then also um, within that plot line, um, she is also coping with and dealing with a lot of fallout from the Second World War. When the Japanese invaded Malaysia, um, she was a prisoner in one of these horrific camps. So there's sort of like three different time points happening and unfolding in this. Um, this is one of those reading experiences where I feel like my reading of this is so um, in communication with The Gift of Rain, just because um, we're exploring similar time periods. Both books are concerned with uh, the Japanese occupation of Malaysia during World War II, but they're coming at it from very different angles and positions. So um, definitely the strength of this for me was Tan Tuan as a writer is just so beautiful. The way he writes is so gorgeous. His descriptions of things, I just think that they're really beautiful. Um, I also really enjoy the sort of topics he explores. So um, in this one, Japanese gardens is a massive topic. Essentially, when she was in this camp, um, she was with her sister, and her sister loved Japanese gardens. Um, her sister did not survive, so she wants to make this garden in memory of her sister. So um, she has some knowledge, but she learns so much from Aratomo, and I learned so much about Japanese gardens too, which I really enjoyed. Um, there's also learning about the woodcuts, also there's this topic of tattooing that comes in which was so interesting. So there's all of these sorts of topics that are being explored and um, both explored as topics and then also as how they relate to like Japanese history and stuff like that which was super duper interesting. Similarly, Yunling is staying with um, a ex-business associate of her father who is uh, South African and so there was also a lot of exploration of like history to do with like the Boer War. He always seems to do this, I realise now reading like two books of his where it's like we ostensibly have our, our exploration which is this woman is working with this man to make this Japanese garden but really we're delving so much into like the histories of where these people come with like so many characters in this really carry their histories with them um, and it was just um, so interesting to read and learn about. I think one thing that is why I didn't rate this quite as highly as The Gift of Rain is that for me um, sometimes the characterization in this was slightly less strong, but I realise that that's kind of because um, The Gift of Rain, um, although it has a similar conceit where it is um, someone who is much older point of their life reflecting on their life and presenting it to you, we follow the main character in that from when he's a child and it's like him as a child and then he creates this bond with this Japanese man and they learn Aikido together and then you explore all of the um, occupation of Malaysia but you're sort of already grounded in these characters when you're exploring all of this sort of more like history side of things. First of all with this you're coming in at a later point in Young Ling's life and then also just because of the experiences that she had in that camp, um, you know understandably incredibly traumatic experiences, she was the sole survivor. Um, this is a character who is dealing with trauma and in some ways has slightly shut down in order to not deal with trauma. So, so much of this is exploring the anger she has, the guilt that she has. There is a lot of this which is processing those sorts of emotions. So, um, you know, obviously that means that this is a character who is, you are at, at times there's a bit of detachment because, you know, she in many ways is slightly detached from herself because um, she's sort of very much at the beginning of this. She has so much anger 
and she doesn't want to be um, following the orders of a Japanese person because uh, she has all of this trauma and stuff like this and these experiences. So it really does examine like the messy reality of being like a survivor of a situation like this. Essentially, like with Malaysia, when it became apparent that the Japanese were making a real head headway into the country, the British troops just abandoned ship and left. Um, all of these people to just deal with it so there's all this fallout from like attitudes towards British people who were there attitudes towards Japanese people who were still there post-war and then even within Malaysia itself the attitudes between different people like the indigenous people and then people of Chinese descent but also um, depending on what your descent is like there's also like rifts and judgments and attitudes and stuff like this so um, so much of this is sort of like looking at fall out of things whereas I think with Gift of Rain you were following the character through like when he's a child before the occupation and then as the occupation is happening there were a lot of exploration of like the bonds between people and of like the harsh realities of war for sure but this very much has like the fallout of that like what do you do when the war is technically over what are these ramifications both emotionally politically because like although the second world war is over in this sort of communist freedom fighters who were fighting against the japanese um during the war although the japanese have left this freedom fighters are still there and they're still fighting for this like communist future and that sort of thing so there's like I felt like it did a really good job in some ways of exploring this like like real real complicated like just because the war officially ended on X date doesn't mean that everything is now okay here there is still so much conflict and so much like of this stuff um, it's just that sometimes because our main character who is the lens through which we are viewing this is herself processing all of these messy traumatic things there is like a detachment there because she has spent as like a safety mechanism has sort of detached slightly in that sort of way. What I would say is, is that if you are interested in reading Tan Tuan Eng, I would recommend starting with The Gift of Rain and then reading this one if you like that one. I still gave this four stars, I thought it was beautiful. I really enjoyed exploring all of the topics within it and just like learning so much about this uh, time period that I don't really know a lot about. I feel like at this point, when he releases more books, I will read them, that's where I'm at. On to my non-fiction, I also read Midnight Chicken and Other Recipes Worth Living For by Ella Risbridger. This is sort of um, part recipe book, part sort of uh, food writing. It is predominantly a recipe book, there's just these gorgeous bits of writing and essays within them. Um, my friend gifted me this because she found it very, very comforting to read during um, March 2020 lockdown. Um, I definitely have found myself really getting into cooking lately, so I thought that this was the perfect time to dive in, and I meant to savour this, and instead I just read it all very, very quickly. From a recipe point of view, this is not necessarily a style of cooking that is 100% my own, mainly because I'm vegetarian and a lot of these do involve meat, and also I don't eat a largest amount of bread, and a lot of these involve bread. So that's not like a criticism, it's just thinking about how many of these recipes recipes I'm gonna make there's a sort of a limit there but I have turned down corners of ones that I would like to do um, but for me the real strength in this is just like the way she writes both about food but also about life so much of this oh, so much of these some of these turned down corners are not recipes they're just things that I really feel like I'm gonna want to return to because um, I don't know I think she wrote this going through quite a hard time and she there's an afterword that is uh new to this edition and i found that really gorgeous because she's just like this was one of the worst times of my life but i made it through and you can too even though it doesn't feel like it at times and i just found that really really comforting and it kind of makes me want to cry sometimes i'm a type of person who just like likes to read recipe books for the hell of it because it's like oh imagine all the foods um, and so these these personal writings that she weaves in with these recipes, like you can tell that like she knows food, but she also knows food in a way that's very like non-judgmental and is very much trying to make things like as easy as possible, as accessible as possible, whether that's because um, she recognises that like we don't all live in massive places that have room for lots of lots of cooking implements. Like even just stuff like giving recipe measurements, like if it's a butternut squash recipe, she might be like one butternut squash or two 500 grams bags of pre-chopped squash. It's like recognising that not everyone has like the mobility to be able to like deal with a butternut squash. So much about this I've just felt like was just like a warm hug. This has like the award of being the first cookbook that I've like actively weeped at the end of because uh, the afterward made me very very emotional um, and I just 
I just thought it was wonderful. I understand why everyone sings its praises. I think that she uh, is a food writer that I would like to read like pretty much everything she writes. I know that she actually has a middle grade book coming out at some point, and that's definitely on my radar too, because the way that I can't emphasize enough how much I love the way that she writes. I gave this a four out of five stars just because of the fact that a lot of the recipes are not stuff that I really see myself making. Um, but I don't know whether to just change it because I <laughs> <laughs> Man, I had a really lovely time and it's really going to stay with me and it's going to be one that I return to so like who knows maybe I'll do a reread like soon and it'll just get bumped up because I did really love it. The final book I want to talk about I read on Libby on my phone and that is In Their Shoes Navigating Non-Binary Life by Jamie Winder. They're like a model, a writer and this is um, sort of a series of each chapter kind of has like a different topic that it's exploring and it's part like exploring like um, topics to do with non-binary identity and then also very much like through the lens of Jamie's own lived experiences and stuff like that. This is like a sort of medium that I find works really well for like non-fiction books. This book I think would be absolutely perfect for like young non-binary people who are finding themselves, uh, exploring their identity and sort of are unsure of what that means like going forward in different scenarios in life because uh, I think Jamie was 22 when they wrote this book um, so it's written from quite a young point of view so like speaking as someone like I am older than Jamie is <laughs> I think definitely like a younger reader would get a lot out of this because they're talking about stuff like what is it like to be non-binary and trying to like go into a professional place of work like what are some of the challenges you can face how can you deal with them stuff like that um, also like non-binary and dating and I think that's why I think that this would be really well suited to younger non-binary people and also because especially like when I was a young little queer trying to find myself I really appreciated being able to see people who were older than me um, like thriving and living and being themselves and like understanding that that was a f that is achievable that is a future you can have so I think that there is so much good to this for me personally, the writing style is not always my cup of tea. I think uh, there are sections where they're making some really, really excellently worded points about like um, a lot of really serious contemporary issues, how, how we can be allies to non-binary people, also how just because you're part of X community doesn't mean that you're not perpetuating harm to like Y communities and stuff like this. I think there is a lot of really good stuff in here. Sometimes the tone is not always my tone. I'm not always great with books that have a lot of like, um, like contemporary references, contemporary slang. They're told in a very like light-hearted, like oh, I'm just like sat down having a conversation with you kind of way. My favourite parts of the was of the book were when they were really delving into like stuff rather than like sort of chatty frothy. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I didn't quite understand all of the metaphors and similes. There was a whole simile to do with a camembert and a crust and I didn't understand it. <laughs> so like, um, that's sort of like a personal preference point of view is that I felt like some of it could have been edited a little bit tighter and the writing style and tone were not always like my jam. But I don't think that that's a problem because I think that for the audience that this book is really going to find that's going to actually be positive and is going to make it more accessible for them as readers. It's a topic that I'd like to explore more of and I will be exploring more of but as like a, an intro start book I felt like this did the job very very well and um, I'm sure it's going to make a lot of people's lives a lot better and that's really great. Um, those are all the books I wanted to talk about this week. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've read any of them. Otherwise I hope you're having a really lovely day and I will see you next time for something different.